I think that we, we all understand the historical role of the zoo being uh, really a, a place for what I can call edutainment. Um, so you would have seen today we have a lot of um, public visitors and a lot of schools that visit and we use the opportunity of the school visits to try and raise awareness amongst children of the importance of biodiversity and conservation. But behind the scenes we are doing a lot of work to start to think about what will this zoo look like uh, 5, 10, 20 years from now. Because I think that across the world you are seeing a movement where there is less appetite for viewing animals in captivity and I think a greater appetite to see animals in national parks and in their, their national state. So the question then becomes what is the long-term future of a very important facility like this. You can also see that we are wanting to more and more be using this facility as the site of important scientific research and also important um, work that backs up the battle we are waging to conserve animals in the face of climate change, biodiversity loss and environmental pollution. And on the other hand, um, to provide a lot of the research that would support us in our battle against wildlife crime. Because if we're going to combat syndicated crime if we're going to conserve wild species in the face of climate change, if we're going to be able to do important work which we are already doing in terms of reintroduction of species and um, interventions to prevent the extinction of species like the important work that the zoo has done with the Ground Hornbill project. Uh, all the scientific research that is happening behind the scenes is very important. Well, um, some of the other thing, important things that we do is we set up reference databases of species. So I'm involved in a huge international project which looks at the barcode of life where we are generating sequence references uh, for all species in the world so that we can be able to have a, a database that will assist especially like with monitoring invasive species, for illegal wildlife trade, if people uh, confiscate unknown samples, we would have created the reference up, uh, database for species that they can use to match or identify those unknown samples, especially when they are processed into powders and you can't, you don't know what it is that somebody is trading in. And then most of the other work we do looks at species that are threatened by climate change. We look at the potential future effects on populations. So we look at the genetic diversity, we look at the distribution patterns, and we try to determine with the effect of climate change, how will the changes in temperature or other environmental factors impact on the distribution of those species. And then that information then goes into uh, government management plans. So it informs government decisions with regarding management plans of species or populations that are critical or priority to the, to the nation. Um, we're very glad today to have the Minister. She came in with this new vision of us uh, transitioning to becoming a new zoo or uh, repositioning ourselves as, as, a new, as a new facility or as a new zoo. Um, it's, it's quite an exciting adventure and I'm quite happy to be part of it. Uh, I would like to thank the, the Minister for coming through and uh, relaying her vision to us uh, so we can move on together with her.